So the DCEU, which has been climbing out of the grave for multiple years, is finally over with the release of Aquaman 2 and the Lost Kingdom. And I don't mean that as a diss towards the DCEU. In fact, if you have not followed my channel for quite a bit, I have loved what the DC Universe has been doing. It's not been for everybody, but almost every movie in this cinematic universe I enjoyed to love. A lot of that started with Zack Snyder's vision from Man of Steel. I was a major fan of what was going on, but after countless years of studio meddling, studio pivoting, where they have an idea, they're going in that direction, and something doesn't work, so then they pivot completely in the opposite way, there's so many different reasons and so many other videos that could discuss why the DCEU did not work. And that's not what I'm here to talk about. But I do want to give that point of frame in mind that I did enjoy about 90% of the movies in this universe. And now with Aquaman 2, I'm not judging it as this is the end-all be-all of the DC universe because it, it shouldn't be. It should be judged as a sequel to Aquaman and as well as a film on its own. And that's what I'm judging it on and sadly this movie is forgettable. It's a mixed bag that has enjoyable moments to it, but in the end of the day when I walked away and I said to myself, would I recommend this to someone? I don't think so. And I have a lot of thoughts on that today, but I'm definitely excited to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. Do you agree with me? Do you not? What do you think about Aquaman 2 and the Lost Kingdom? Let me know down below in the comment section, as well as look out for a final DCEU movie ranking this weekend, as well as a comic book movie ranking. I'm going to rank every comic book movie from this year. It's going to be a fun list. I can't wait to have you guys tune in for that. But if you're curious to hear what Aquaman 2 is about, well, after failing to defeat Aquaman the first time, Black Manta now wields the power of a mythic Black Trident to unleash an ancient and evil force. Hoping to end his reign of terror, Aquaman forges an unlikely alliance with his brother Orm, the former king of Atlantis that he defeated in the first one. Setting aside their differences, they join forces to protect their kingdom and save the world from destruction. You've probably heard that before, and honestly, watching this movie, you've probably seen this story before. General, this movie very much reminded me of a lot of big blockbusters in like the early 2000s, the late 2000s, where they were throwing so many colors and it felt like for every visual noise movie we had, we had a great blockbuster in between that. And that's kind of the best way that I can actually describe Aquaman 2 in The Lost Kingdom is visual noise. One of those movies that when you go to the, the Best Buy or Sam's Club or Costco and you're wanting to buy a TV, they have this movie playing because it looks gorgeous. And that's what I want to talk about is the pros because I thought the cinematography in here was quite stunning. Just as I did with the first Aquaman movie, I think the visual effects are incredible and utterly beautiful. The worlds that you go down to in Atlantis and again, just across the sea, are extravagant and eye-popping and truly keep you engaged with what is on the screen. And we saw this film in 3D. I, I would not have preferred that. I didn't think the 3D was anything to write home about, but still, eye-popping, caught me engaged. I thought everything into that nature was just beautiful and just as great as the first Aquaman movie. And I genuinely mean that to all the different worlds, to all the different locales, to all the different creatures and designs that you see in here, they were all really creative and quite beautiful. On top of that, one thing that I praised the first Aquaman for is having the best action in any of the DCEU films. But on top of that, I think just the best action in a lot of different comic book movies. And I think Aquaman 2 kind of continues that. I think some of it takes a little bit of a downer on since they're more under the sea in this, but I liked how kind of more bombastic and bigger it was. But don't get me wrong, there are some fight sequences in here that James Wan just perfects. The final fight in here, I actually think is my favorite fight out of both Aquaman movies in the way that James Wan was really much using that camera and I thought it was damn badass. Definitely the action will keep you entertained, definitely the extravagant eye-popping nature will get you entertained and when you go to one of those stores and they're playing this movie you're probably gonna want to buy a TV. I genuinely mean as a compliment, it, it, it's, it's a gorgeous movie to look at. It's an entertaining one to watch at times, it has great little musical drops and everything of that that gets you into the mood of this. I can't deny that Jason Momoa I think is still a fantastic Arthur Curry Aquaman. I think he's just great in this role. I love what he's been able to build into this. I used to really like Aquaman back in the day, but I love this interpretation. It's completely different than what I used to read, and I think he's awesome in the role, and I'm going to honestly miss him. I know he, there's some rumors that maybe he's going to be something else in the DCU, and that excites me, but again, 
as Aquaman, I think he did a damn good job. And I think he does a damn good job in this movie. And alongside that, Patrick Wilson, I think just kills it as King Orm. I thought he was great in the first Aquaman, but part of me actually liked him a little bit more in here. You get a little bit more of a deeper nuance to his character, which I think when I go back and rewatch the first Aquaman, I'm going to have a deeper appreciation for, as well as having this brotherly tale, two brothers who come from two faraway lands who really much didn't see their ideals in the first film really kind of finally come to understand one another in this one. And James Wan has very much talked about this as being a brotherly adventure film, and you can absolutely see that in every way and it honestly really impressed me with what they were able to do there. Honestly, when it comes down to the rest of the characters, those are the only two I will give pros to. We'll talk about the rest in the mixed aspects. Doesn't go down to their performances, just more of what they did with them. Everyone else did a decent job. Myself, personally, I love Yahya Abdul-Mantin II, and I think he's awesome. I just wish they did more of him with Black Manta. Speaking of Black Manta, I do want to mention, I love how James Wan, again, more as a costume and production design thing, I love how he has this aesthetic and vibe to each and every one of the characters. And honestly, when we look at costume designs, I think the costume design for Black Manta and Aquaman's costumes are some of the best in the comic book genre. I don't think enough people talk about that specifically, so I definitely wanted to at least mention it. Last but not least, the final two pros I really want to talk about in this movie is James Wan as a visionary. While I think the story has a lot of issues, and we're going to talk about that in a second, I think on a directing style, he continues to prove why he is so fantastic on blog blockbusters like this in the way that he's able to capture certain moments and capture certain scenes and make a breezy adventure film because that's what this is it flies by it's just a little too rushed at times but all the action all the moments you are at least having a smile on your face because i was for sure and on top of that the other thing i will give credit is a lot of the ideas for the story and the worlds that they go to i thought were great I just wanted more of them, and that's where I get into my issues with this. I'm not really mixed on anything. This is, when I say a mixed bag of sorts, there's great stuff, there's good stuff, and there's bad stuff, and it's all shooken up into one fish jar, and those issues I have with this, we'll start with that. The film is rushed. I had the same issue with Captain Marvel 2 earlier this year where it felt like there was zero character development for anyone else. There was a fun banter between the, the girls, but other than that, no development whatsoever for anyone else or any of the other planets that they were planet hopping to. And Aquaman, it's basically the same complaints I have, but I think it's even done worse here. Specifically because of how great the lore was built up into the first Aquaman. So I was expecting that same thing, and we don't get that at all here. They do little nuances here, but it's so surface level that it really disappointed me. First off, they go to this awesome area that's like this deserted prison that's all in the Sahara. It is awesome. Barely there. Okay, cool. So now we're going to go to this like pirate cove, which is this underground base that's hidden from everywhere else in the world, even Atlantis. Oh, we're barely there. Action was cool, but okay, we're barely there. Okay, so we're now going to go do this. And again, they continue to showcase these areas, showcase these new parts of Atlantis, showcase new places of this world. And I just sit there and I'm like, why couldn't we develop that more? It seems like they had so many different ideas and I think there was a way to intersect them and put them all in together with one, but it doesn't really come together. And even when you get to the final area that they go to, which I found all this undead possession that James Wan's just known for within the horror genre, he did a great job with the trench in the first movie. I wish they would have doubled down on that. And I think there could have been a big war scene just like the first one. Not saying that there's not great action in the back half, but... It feels like he was trying to tie up knots from the first film with Black Manta, but then now explore this new thing. And I feel like this new thing could have been a third potential movie and Black Manta could have been the second movie or vice versa, flip-flop it. Again, not saying we were going to get a third movie, but at least that could have been the idea. Because when you look now at Black Manta, I think he was completely wasted in this movie once again. Which sucks because his costume's awesome. Yaya abdul II is awesome. And I think he's great in the role. It's just the character is wasted. He's not the only one wasted. I thought Nicole Kidman was wasted in here. I think Tamara Morrison was wasted in here. I think Randall Park was wasted. I think Dolph Lundgren was wasted. I even think Amber Heard was wasted. Specifically just that character. Whichever side of the whole thing you were on, I'm not getting into that. 
that's not movie related. Her character's wasted. And it's weird because her character has an important part to the entire film and she's not really there. I understand this more brother's story, but that just goes for everyone involved. Like I'm I'm more shocked that Nicole Kidman was barely in this movie. Maybe she didn't want to be, but what the f are you doing with her? And, that, and that's where I really feel is that as enjoyable as this movie can be and you can enjoy it for what it is with the action, with the cinematography, with the worlds you go to, I felt frustrated because of what the first Aquaman film gave us. It gave us a brand new world, awesome places to explore, and just actual substance. And in here, it feels like a McDonald's fast food meal that you're just piling through. And it has a story that is just all over the place and it's really hard to get into. In fact, the first hour, I, I didn't care what was going on and I just kept trying to sit there to care. I really wanted to, and I just couldn't. And again, I'm not grading this as the end of the DCEU. I'm not going to grade that at all because then we could just grade it even harder. We're grading it as a film itself, and it's not a good movie, and it's one that completely disappointed me. So honestly, I don't have too many more thoughts to say about Aquaman 2. I think this is just not really a great movie at all. I think it's fine in the end of the day, and I think there are enjoyable bits to it. I just don't see myself rewatching this one ever, really. I think the first half is really messy, and I think once it finally gets into the story, it's really hard to care at that point. Orm and Arthur have great chemistry with one another. The action is, again, stunning, and the whole entire film looks gorgeous. Production design, costume design, all that technical stuff is fantastic, and James Wan really nails that, but this film, I think, was honestly just hurt within the editing and the story. And I think those are the two things that really devastated this film. This film needed more substance to it to really make me give a shit about what was going on. And in the end of the day, it was just more visual noise than anything else. So with all that said, I'm going to give Aquaman 2 a C-. minus. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button for more. And look out for that final DCEU movie ranking coming out later this week, as well as a 2023 comic book movie ranking. And if you're still loving movies and you're watching this channel we have so many top 10 lists coming out next week top 10 best movies of the year top 10 best tv shows but i actually think i'm gonna rank every tv show i watched this year as well as every video game i played this year tons and countless videos thank you so much again for watching this and of course until next time stay classy